Hello pop picking world, this is the second time I've made a video like this. Two years ago I made a video ranking all the ABBA albums made in their time as a group and I tried to also mention singles that weren't on albums, b-sides that weren't on albums etc etc and I'm not going to go into such detail this time because anyone who needs the information that I put on that video can just go and watch it. I'll try and remember to put a link to it or a little card up there or something so that you can just go and click on it. Obviously times change, but now in 2022, anyone wanting to rank the ABBA LPs has to consider ABBA Voyage because they obviously reunited to make that album. This is the first brand new album they've released since 1981. And obviously my tastes change over the years. So if my new ranking doesn't match that from two years ago, don't worry. Just because one album might be lower down in the rankings, it doesn't mean I don't like it. It just means that an LP might have more emotional meaning for me as a person, or that today I prefer this album and yesterday I prefer that album. I've mentioned in many of my videos about artists, not just ABBA, that often there is a holy trinity of LPs. And for ABBA, these are Arrival, The Album and Voulez Vu. How will these figure in my new ranking? Wait on to find out in my new ABBA Rankings version 2.0. So at number 12, number 12, The Visitors. A great album, but too miserable for me, age 13, to cope with at that time. 11. The Singles, The First 10 Years. Okay, it's the only album to include the A-sides of the 1982 singles, The Day Before You Came and Under Attack. They edited the first chorus and second verse out of the name of the game without asking me. Number 10. Put this on a CD. Ring Ring. Again, a lovely album from 1973, but not quite the standard that the other ABBA albums would reach later. Now, how is he putting The Visitors at number 12 and Ring Ring at number 10? And I think it's just because me, age 53 now, I mean, I had, believe you me, I had not heard this full album until 1991. I can remember exactly where I was. I was at teacher training college and I spotted this in Smith's I think um, and picked it up and this was the first time I'd heard the whole album in 1991 that would have made me 23 something like that 24 maybe mature enough to accept that it's cheesy it really is cheesy right and that's what makes me laugh about it it puts a smile on my face not quite the same cracking smile as some of the other albums we're going to talk about but because it's so cheesy it makes me laugh that's why it goes higher than the visitors and I like a miserable album believe you me I've listened to David Sylvian for crying out loud but I think just because of at the time the visitors as me age 13 I was just so sad about them splitting up and everything and all of that just kind of infiltrates into it so yeah number 10 then ring ring number nine number nine number nine sorry wrong pop group abba voyage okay there are nine albums that i would class as better than this lp but we are now looking into the nth degree as one is better than the other of course it's fabulous that abba have released a new lp in 2021 but we can't escape it Little Things is twee and interrupts side one. We don't all like Christmas and this song, lovely though it is, should be a single in its own right released at Christmas. If one were to play Voyage in March, this Christmas song sounds a bit out of place. It would have been better if they'd found a different song to record for the album instead. Bumblebee is a lovely track for Frida. But as far as I know, and I'm not an expert, and I thought about this a few minutes ago actually, I don't think I ever taught the life cycle of a bee at school, did the butterfly and the caterpillar or whatever and the frog and stuff like that. But as far as I know, 
from the little that I remember at school about bees. Male bees are drones. They really do nothing for the upkeep of the hive. It's the female bees that you see fluttering around, getting the nectar out of the plants and stuff like that and, and, and whatever. The male bee does nothing. So quite why Bjorn is singing about a male bee or is writing songs about a male bee, I don't know. The other point I would make about this song is that surely, surely to goodness, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not a major criticism, but I know that there will be people out there who are having a giggle about this, but surely somebody could have said, look, I've got an English speaking mate. How do you pronounce the name of this herb? It's not thyme, it's thyme. Poor Frida, if ever you sing this in public, then please remember that it's thyme. Please watch this video <laughs> and sing thyme instead of thyme or somebody influential, tell her, and really, Bumblebee should be about the contribution of the female in ensuring the survival of any species, including ours. The rest of the songs are brilliant, but I can't recommend the album as being the best of ABBA. I'm so sorry for all those people that love it and everything, I love it. But it isn't, it, being critical and honest it really isn't their best we all know which albums are their best especially as two of the songs are i would say like little things and bumblebee i would say are just a little bit again like that but just a little bit beneath what we've come to expect from abba Ooh, that was silly wasn't it standout tracks on the album i would say are i still have faith in you when you dance with me, I could be that woman and keep an eye on Dan. I'm getting to really like that one now. Okay, so number eight. Number eight. Greatest Hits Volume 1. Enough said. And if you don't want to buy Ring Ring, then the standout tracks on Ring Ring are included on here. So. Number seven. Greatest Hits Volume 2. Again, I have to say, this is an absolute classic of an album. Put it on, it's better than gold. It really is better than gold. Okay, gold might have um, so, some later songs on it, such as Lay Your Love On Me and The Winner Takes It All and stuff. But as, as a really sort of feel-good ABBA album that's just brim to brim with quality and even not too bad a pressing for a Greatest Hits um, album, this is really worth it. It's cracker. Number six. Abba the Album. This song contains the full version of the name of the game and also Take a Chance on Me. And again, all the other songs on this album are just superb. End to end quality. Number five. Voulez Vous. Number four. Again, a cheesy album, probably not their best album quality wise, but just one that puts a smile on my face. Waterloo, absolutely, again, a cracker, okay? You, you can't be 12, I think, and think this album's as much of a cracker as perhaps some of the other ones that I'm gonna mention later, you know, probably even Voulez Vu, but you could, if you're, a, I think, a little bit older and didn't care about being trendy, all right? It, it's just another you know, fantastically twee album that is actually miles better than Ring Ring, even if, um, you know, there's only a year between them. Number three, Arrival, Dancing Queen, Knowing Me, Knowing You, Money, 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 Need I Say More? Fantastic album. Again, some tweeness on it. Dum Dum Diddle, for instance. But I think we're even learning to forgive Dum Dum Diddle. Maybe it's just my age. Number two, ABBA. Despite Banger Boomerang, which I don't think I'll ever forgive, this is a great album. I even like Tropical Loveland and Man in the Middle. So there you go. 
brilliant album. I think it was the first album that I ever chose by ABBA to buy. Um, I think at the time that I first got this album, it would have been 1978 because I was hoping to get the album, but nobody had the album. There was a strike or something. So I bought this instead with my pocket money. And uh, yeah, um, a couple of weeks later, my mum surprised me with the album. I can remember her walking in through the passageway with this bag with Abba the album in it. And I was so excited. I was so excited because it was just a complete surprise. So back in the day, buying an album was really something, you know, especially as a child. You know, they were expensive. They are expensive now. If you go out and buy a, a vinyl LP, maybe the 299 that this cost me perhaps was it 299 275 something like that that would actually work out as similar to walking into HMV now and uh, and, and buying the same thing and number 1 super trooper while we're on the prices of things, the more keenly amongst you will notice there's a price tag on here, 95p. That's, I think that's a later thing from a charity shop or something like that. I bought this on eBay for a penny. It's the original Super Trooper LP. It has the gift of music thing here. It's also got the little leaflet in there where you can enter the competition and buy the merchandise and stuff. So yeah, it is an original copy, except it wouldn't have cost 95p. Back in 1980, the the price of an album would have been about £3.99, something like that, maybe. Maybe a little bit more. So, Super Trooper. What's not to like about Super Trooper? All right. But I have to do an honourable mention here. Okay. This was no way was this released in Abba's lifetime. I think it was released in about 2012, something like that. Again, to not very much fanfare, really. I think they could have perhaps made a little bit more of a hoo-ha of it. They'd always been against the, the publication of a live album. There were one or two singles uh, or single B-sides that they put live tracks on. For example, on the B-side of the name of the game, there's a live version of I Wonder, which none of them liked. And I can't really see why, because I think it's brilliant. I love it. I think I prefer it to the... Um, to the studio version, um, be all, uh, sorry, Benny very quickly um, made up that beautiful piano solo in, in the middle of it because on stage it was uh, just brass and saxophones and stuff and, and they wiped that and just straight onto the master, Benny just threw in that piano solo and it is so clever, it is so beautiful, and I, you know, it, it, it's lovely, but they always played down their live things, they, they, were, they were a studio band, they were interested in getting the most out of the studio and the various effects and stuff like that, and it was a bit of a tedium to go out and have to re reproduce it on tour, but they did, and they did it brilliantly. So, in 1986, we got this crappy thing called ABBA Live, which was a hodgepodge of various live performances that had been recorded, but not a complete gig. It, some bits came from 1977, some from 1979, some from Dick Cavett meets ABBA. And it just made a very incoherent ex, um, experience to listen to, and nobody knew that that came out. But then... In 2012, this thing, ABBA Live at Wembley Arena, came out. And it gets an honourable mention from me. Because if you really want the ABBA experience, the experience of the fans as well as the group, as well as, you know, just the, the fantastic songs. Again, you're not getting the winner takes it all and Super Trooper and Leo Your Love and Me. But you are getting, you will get a, a the way old friends do on here. And you're getting a whole ton of stuff from 1975, well, 74, really, right up to 1979. So it is just a brilliant album. 
and well worth listening to. Even if you don't want to buy the singles and the greatest hits compilations, get this instead. It's brilliant. Okay, all right, I will see you later. Thank you very much for watching. Give it a like, give it a share if you dare. Bye.